Aloha, welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Dr. Tonia Bagby. Our, regarding our theme today, hold the vision, trust the process. I'm Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to the show. Mahalo for joining us today. You can catch us live on stream at livestream.com on the thinktechhawaii.com channel. We also encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. The goal of our weekly show, Keys to Success, is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career, and or business. David Chang, CEO of Chang Holding Company, was our guest on our last show, and his words of wisdom with regards to his keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services' website, newmanconsultingservices.com, or landing page, danelia.org. The theme for our today is hold the vision, trust the process. Joining us today in the studio as our honor guest is Dr. Tonya Bagby, Acting Director of Veteran Affairs, Pacific Islands Healthcare System, which services an uh, estimated 50,000 veterans throughout the Hawaii and the Pacific Islands, correct? Correct. Mahalo for joining us today. No, mahalo for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's great having you on the show. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bagby, share with our viewers, if you will, uh, just a little bit about your path to becoming the acting director. Okay, well, that's it's been a great journey, and I will say that in the beginning. Um, I have a clinical psychology degree in um, my doctor's in clinical psychology, and I joined the Department of Veterans Affairs in 2005 as a psychology intern, right. um, and that was at the Hampton VA Medical Center in Hampton, Virginia. Mm -hmm. During that time, um, the director was an acting director um, named Dr. Jay Robinson, who was uh, also he was African American, and he also had the clinical psychology degree that I have. Mm -hmm. And so it was really kind of an eye-opening experience to see a medical center director with the same degree as me. And so although I was doing my internship and was very very focused on learning the craft and skills of being a psychologist within the Department of Veterans Affairs. I believe that planted a seed within right. me to be to know that there are other opportunities within mm. the healthcare system. From that time, I graduated in 2006 and then got hired with the Department of Veterans Affairs at uh, the Hampton VA um, in 2007. Mm -hmm. And from that time, I just continued to work as a staff psychologist, but at any given time when my supervisor or the associate chief of staff of mental health would ask for volunteers to participate in various clinics or organizational um, um, uh, stretch assignments that we call them, mm -hmm. kind of like on-the-job training, mentoring okay. programs, um, I, would, I would say, okay, I'll do it, <laughs> I'll great. do it. Because uh, one of my goals was to learn more about the organization as a whole uh -huh. and not just my role as a psychologist. Uh -huh. And right. so with that, um, I observed the executive leadership kind of formula within the Department of Veterans Affairs, which has an associate director, chief of staff, chief nurse executive, as well as, of course, the medical center director. So there's either the quad or pentad when you have a deputy chief of staff, chief of staff, nurse exec, um, an associate director, and then a medical center director. So depending on the size of an organization. Yeah. But what I observed right away was that the associate director position was a second in command. Uh, okay. So it's similar to being the COO or chief operating yeah. officer as a you know, chief executive officer with the director position. So I knew early on that if I wanted to become a medical center director, I needed to kind of advance across the organization and, and achieve an executive uh, position. And so um, I had some opportunities to participate in leadership development courses with mm -hmm. the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, and I also, which allowed me to transition into a more administrative side in 2012, mm -hmm. where I jumped from being a clinician to uh, administration, and when I got hired at the DC VA Medical Center as the executive assistant to the medical center director in DC, uh, my boss then told me, look, I want you here for two years, and that's it. And so in um, January of 2014, one cold day in DC, mm -hmm. I saw the associate director position open at Pacific Islands, mm. um, applied, and uh, you know, got the job, was successful, and moved here in August of 2014 as mm -hmm. the associate director. And again, just constantly learning and growing mm -hmm. and understanding healthcare operations as a whole. And when um, previous director uh, retired in February 2016, 
um, I then became the acting director of VA Pacific Islands mm -hmm. Healthcare. That's and, a, and that's a blessing for the islands. Oh, yes. thank you. And you know, one of the wonderful things that, you, that you're talking about is, as we're on a Keys to Success show is the fact that you had a goal and you worked towards achieving that goal. And so in that process, you attended classes, you just really understood that you had to learn different things in order to get where you wanted to go. Okay. It's interesting because as a management consultant, that's exactly what happened to me. Because when I first started out, I started out in a certain position and I made, even though I wasn't paid to do anything else, I went and I learned all the positions in that, in that particular setting. And within the first year, I became the executive director. And so, you know, it's, that's one of the keys to success, is set your goal, learn everything you can about where you want to be, and do everything you can to get there. Yes, and yeah. I think the one thing that's, that I find is critical is a lot of people think they have to know everything. Right. Right. And, and what I've learned, even when I took on, and say, the operations manager position of a, a clinic in Virginia Beach, which is our community-based outpatient clinic, mm -hmm. um, you know, one person came to me and said, you don't know anything about running the clinic. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But I will learn. That's and exactly And you will right. help me. That's, that's exactly right. And, and so taking on stretch assignments and, yeah. um, or mentoring opportunities really is, in that, as you're saying, and not expecting compensation for it, yes. per se. Yes. Because that will come. Yes, mm -hmm. right. It Such will come. Such a great statement. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and just learning yeah. has been really, I think, again, kind of a key to my success. Oh, so true. Share with our viewers, what's your vision and what do you want to accomplish in your role? So as a healthcare operations, um, again, understanding that we... The medical facility, uh, people trust us mm -hmm. with their lives, yes. literally with their mm -hmm. lives. So and true. so having a healthcare uh, organization that is, where employees are fully engaged mm -hmm. and committed, um, that we practice customer service um, and, and provide great customer service, but that we um, really have a, a, a goal for operational excellence and kind of a culture of safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we have a culture of safety, then we allow, we build trust with uh, the veterans that we serve, their families, any other stakeholders. Um, and then if we uh, work to uh, a level of excellence, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, ongoing learning, um, developing training, mentoring, um, and, and not accepting um, the status quo per se in our performance, mm -hmm. um, then, then I think um, my, my, my vision, if you will, will be achieved because we will be known mm -hmm. as a facility that, is, uh, that provides excellent care mm -hmm. um, and that is engaged and cares about the veterans who come through our doors. And it's not only about the veterans, but it's also the employees. Absolutely. I want uh, the employees. Yeah, employees. I want yeah. the, um, our, uh, all of our employees. We have over 1,000 employees mm -hmm. um, um, within the Pacific Islands healthcare system. It's not only here on Oahu, but on all the Hawaiian Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. Mm -hmm. I want all of them to come to work feeling as if they have a have that they have meaning that they mm -hmm. have purpose that there is passion mm -hmm. because as a veteran myself uh, a lot of veterans that we feel that we've been forgotten mm -hmm. uh, our mm -hmm. time was uh, mm -hmm. in, in the active portion of our careers uh, we were loved and mm -hmm. now that we've we've moved on uh, we've some of us feel forgotten mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing you say is that that's something that you want to not to happen mm -hmm. you want them to know that we still we still are, are cared for, mm. and we can't come back and get mm. that. All of right. course, of course. So, it, in your role, you have a lot of responsibility, and I know, and I know, it's not even. I'm sure. I'm positive that you have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. um, along the way. Uh, what are some of those challenges, and how are you working through those challenges? So, what, that and that's an awesome question mm. because I think. One of the challenges I have is really understanding I have expectations, mm -hmm. and then there's my reality. Mm -hmm. And how do I manage both, or how do I find that balance? And mm -hmm. so it's really trying to maintain the balance of, of, of having the expectations of the organization, of the staff, mm -hmm. to achieve certain goals and outcomes. And yet, you know, at times we don't necessarily have all the resources that we wish we had or want mm -hmm. um, to, to get to uh, our final state, mm -hmm. right? And so I have to find ways to um, empower staff and, and to help them think about um, achievement sometimes a little differently. Mm -hmm. Right, because sometimes we just get 
blind, you know, we get this kind of yeah. tunnel vision right. about what we want and how we get there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet there may be a detour path or a different way, and yet we could still achieve the goal or even more of a, a even a more informed or better goal mm -hmm. if we go a little diff if we take a little yes. kind of detour. So that is the challenge. So it's constantly thinking of um, and being present. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things I use from a psychology perspective and um, Freud theoretical uh, conceptualization is that Freud always said that you've got to have equally hovering attention mm -hmm. to be effective as a therapist. Would you say that again, please? Equally, equally hovering, hovering attention. attention. I like that. So I'm here, but I'm constantly paying attention to things that are going on around me. Right. Mm. Um, my administrative staff staff will say that I have bionic hearing, <laughs> right? Um, because I yeah. constantly try yes. to, and, and that's how I'm able to address challenges, because mm -hmm. I usually have a sense of what's going on mm -hmm. before people bring them to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And with that, I already kind of have an idea mm -hmm. of how I want to respond. Mm -hmm. So staying a few steps ahead, yeah. okay. Um, it helps me um, kind of run, I think, an effective organization. Right, right. Okay. You know, you, you're so right with uh, the tunnel vision. Actually, John always uses that, those two words. He says, you know, we can, we, we, it's important not to have tunnel vision, that we've got to expand our horizon and understand that there, you know, life will bring you all different challenges. And if you're just looking th like this, you, you have a really hard time kind of accepting and handling those. But in actuality, we need to go with the flow. Yes? yes. Go with the flow with, with our end result always in sight. But yes. understand that we're going to go like this a little yes. bit. Mm -hmm. you know? And actually, our lives become much more rich. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. Because, much. We, because we, we yes. just experience things that we could not have even envisioned for yes. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we experience people and, and yes. scenery and, and yes. you know, the detours are absolutely phenomenal. Yes. Right. So true. So true. So, Dr. Bagby. Bagby. Very good. Bagby. <laughs> forgive, forgive me. Unique name. What is Correct that? Correct him, please. It's <laughs> a married name, so it's, it's Bagby. A, it's a married name. Okay. All right, so it's his, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, how, do, how does uh, your, your mission and vision relate to your strategy? Mm. Well, with the Department of Veterans Affairs, our mission really comes uh, with uh, Secretary McDonald and Undersecretary um, Sloan Gibson and then Dr. Shulkin, who's over, uh, over Undersecretary of Health Operations. And, you know, we have the mission of I care, which mm -hmm. is a kind of our mantra, if you will, of integrity, uh, commitment, advocacy, respect, and excellence. That's, mm -hmm. that's we care, right? Mm -hmm. I care. Um, and then we have a, a document called My VA, mm -hmm. um, and with the, the Blueprint for Excellence, which has certain directives and initiatives that across the Department of Vet uh, Veterans Affairs or Veterans Health Administration um, goals that we need to achieve as a healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. And so that really provides the overall kind of mission uh, or, or vision, or vision, I guess, mm -hmm. and our mission um, within the Pacific Islands. And then the strategy comes in how do we operationalize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these directives. Right. Right. Okay. How do I, as a leader of the organization, tap into the various expertise uh, on the leadership team and the staff members across the organization in Pacific Islands? How do they come? To, how do I empower them to come together to come up with plans for us to achieve the goals in which have been set by us from mm -hmm. our executive senior leadership? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I. If I, um, if I understand the mission and how it relates to strategy, it's really the idea that how do I help translate that mission, mm. um, give it a vision. A lot of times when I share with staff, because we always get new directives and mm -hmm. always get you know, new things that we have to do and all that kind of stuff, but there's, it's not really anything new. Right. Mm. Right? Right. And so it's just a matter of helping people incorporate and understand that we're already doing it. We're just having to do it a little differently. differently. And so let's tweak our process to kind of meet these objectives and goals and succeed. Right. So hold that thought yes. just for a moment. Uh, we're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Dr. Tonia Bagby regarding our theme today, Hold the Vision, Trust the Process. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at three o'clock. 
Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show. You can watch the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered. If you're a woman or girl, everyone is welcome, but it's really dedicated to you. And we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi. We've been talking with Dr. Tony Bagby, Acting Director of the Veterans Affairs Pacific Islands Healthcare System about our theme today, Hold the Vision, Trust the Process. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo. Welcome back to the show. Dr. Bagby, share with our viewers, if you will, mm -hmm. what are your three top success habits? Three top success habits. So one, and this is based on some of the feedback I've received from staff, is okay. being present. Okay. Um, being uh, kind of like, it goes back to that equally hovering attention. Um, being mindful of my environment, of mm. other people's experiences. Um, and being approachable. Mm. People know that I have standards and or expectations. Mm -hmm. People also know that I have strong boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, yet people also know that, uh, and that I will be truthful, yes. right? And there was yes. integrity. Integrity is very um, important. Yes, it is. And so um, I think um, there is a level of consistency in my behavior and that has, uh, helps people feel confident mm. in me as a leader. Mm -hmm. And I think um, being able to, again, be present, mindful, approachable, mm -hmm. um, and in somewhat having some transparency in, mm -hmm. in who I am um, has helped me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, just, you know, talking with you and, and uh, you know, in the past we've had conversations, you are very calm. And that's actually really an important trait as well because there's so much going on. You know, emergencies here, emergencies there, but to be able to not get caught up in that and to be able to sit out and think about what's happening and then be able to respond, not react accordingly is really, really great. I'm, I'm not always great at that. I, I do that, you know, I really do my, my best to catch myself sometimes because sometimes I'm, I'm just reacting to the yes. situation. But I've learned over the years, yes. when I was much younger, I was reacting, but as I've learned over the years, um, I'll catch myself when I start reacting yes. and, and just sit back and go, wait a minute, there's a reason for this happening. So just take it in, respond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've also found that too, um, if I, you know, it's kind of listening to the silence, but also mm -hmm. usually when people are sick, crying chicken little, the world's coming to yeah. an end, it's more, that's more just, it's just distraction. Yes. It's just noise. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start as asking the right questions, you yes. know, listening and asking the right questions yes. and really getting to the root, it, mm -hmm. then it's it really, uh, the truth, you know, comes out mm -hmm. and you can then strategize and or plan your response. Mm -hmm. And I have found nine times out of 10, if I just kind of, stay calm, yes. if you will, and not buy into the drama, Yes, um, it, it allows me to make better decisions. Yes. And I think as a leader, it's important to be calm because yes. everyone's watching, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, but it seems as though you're also passionate about, uh, passionate about what, what you want to do and, and where you are and uh, uh, your goals and visions. Mm -hmm. Very much so. What okay. is the best advice you've ever received? It was from my mother. And, oh, yes. um, 
and it was during a time in my life, teenage years, where it was very, as we all know, is not always the most fun. Yes. Um, and she said, you know, your life is what you make it. Yeah, ah. so true. And so as I reflect on that over the years, you know, I have a choice in how I'm going to respond mm -hmm. to life. I have a choice in, in knowing or in whether I accept the status quo, mm -hmm. if I stop, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's choices. Mm -hmm. and, and if I want more, and more doesn't mean in material things, mm -hmm. but if I really want to live an engaged life, mm -hmm. then I have to take ownership of that. Yeah. And I, am, I have to hold myself responsible for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so she shared that when I was about 14 mm -hmm. in a very pivotal time. And, and I thank her for it because right. it is, it, it, it gave my life meaning. Right. You know, it's interesting because my mother gave me some of the best advice as well. So all I can say to the millennials and the next <laughs> geners, listen to your mothers. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Because they are human too. Yeah, that's no, true. But, that's but, true. But that's the, the joy of it is that um, even, and I'll say this, and my mom told me recently, before I came to Pacific Islands, actually, uh -huh. I was with her in Florida, and she shared with me, which I thought was, was um, amazing, which is part of the why I, I really value communication and being open and transparency. But she said, mm -hmm. you know, I would never have dreamed this for you. Yeah. You know, you've gone far beyond my expectations. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. wonderful right? That's wonderful. And so yeah. for a mother to say, you know, I only yeah. had you going this far, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and yeah, you're up here. Oh, my goodness, you know. Good thing you didn't yeah. listen to me. <laughs> right. Right. Very and, that's, true. and that's another thing that people right. think that they always know what's best for you. Yeah. Well, no, you have to know what's best. For, you have to, I, I've had to learn to trust what is best for me. That's true. And you, 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 try, you know what's best for you if you really spend some time in silence just letting it come to you yes you know that's very important yes but i must say this it's a good thing you did listen to her because it inspired <laughs> you to do and be who you are today oh, of yeah. course i mean yeah. you, have, you have to listen to the yeah, mother of course. Just, but not everything no no that's true you don't that's have to true. do everything right. but listen to <laughs> come on and, and i gotta hold up your mother's image <laughs> oh, my, my yeah. mom i love my mom too and she would say you know you're grown up and uh you don't want me telling you what to do but I'm going to tell you anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we are. Let's see. Dr. Bagby, when you have a chance, mm -hmm. what do you ask other leaders like yourself? Mm -hmm. what, what questions do you ask? I usually ask about their journey. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, a lot of people just focus on the title and or the position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they forget about the person. Right. Mm. And so really learning about people's journeys yes. um, just opens up a wide you know, book of opportunity. And, and, and I learn from listening. Uh, 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 from listening. And mm -hmm. so um, having a person tell me their story mm -hmm. um, allows me to engage differently and, um, and, and to... Um, reflect, you know, better, I guess, if you will, on some of my goals and challenges as a leader. You know, that's, that's really critical because s people who are successful, and we've said this many times before on the show, are more than willing to share their journey yes. and their success habits and everything else and share advice mm -hmm. if you ask, mm -hmm. if anybody asks, mm -hmm. you know. Never ever be afraid to approach somebody who you feel is successful in life, whatever that success is to you. It could be a great, having a great relationship, a great marriage. It could be um, you know, being financially very well off. It could be a lot of different things. But if you want certain things in your life, uh, then find people who have those things and ask them about their journey and any advice they can give you. You'd be amazed how much you can cut out all the all the challenges that you have. You can cut out a lot of those if you learn from other people first. You can get there quicker, right? You have to be able to listen. You have to be able to listen. So true. Yes. And listening, a, a, a good listener is a powerful person. Correct. Uh, and that's one of the keys. Most people just wait for their turn to speak. Correct. Mm -hmm. So how have you developed as a leader and as a person as a result of being in your position. You know, and I thank you for that opportunity because, um, and when I was ref 
reviewing the questions, I thought, wow, I had to sit back and think on that. And as a leader, I think I've become more focused, mm -hmm. as you know, just more focused. Um, I've become more confident mm -hmm. in who I am and what I understand and what I know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also feel that I've just become uh, more grounded because, mm -hmm. you know, every, it's just, it's a very dynamic uh, environment in where I work. And so, yes. like you say, being calm and, yes. and kind of, um, and, and just feeling more grounded and focused has just, has helped me tremendously. Yes. I don't know. Um, and, I, and I guess I'm trying to say that people have shared that with me too, yes, who have okay. watched me in my journey, mm -hmm. that I've become more grounded, more mm -hmm. focused, more confident. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think I've become more vulnerable mm -hmm. because again, there's a perception of leadership, yeah. right? And authority and power. Yeah. And so you never know what other people's agendas really are. That's true. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I find myself a little bit more vulnerable and which allows me to appreciate the friendships and the relationships that I have yeah. Um, like with my mother, with my family, yes. you know, and friends who yeah. just like me for who I am, and they know right. the, the you know the good, bad, and the ugly, right? Yes. So it's not they don't have just the perception of me now. Yes, they've seen me from the beginning and and right. and continue on. So the vulnerability um, is, is 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 interesting. Yes, yes, very, very well true. Spoken. So. Um, what, let's kind of sum up right now mm -hmm. as far as uh, your three top keys to success. Three top keys to success. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I believe to, you need to do what, you are, what feels right for you. Okay. okay. Um, and what uh, is a part of who you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and I think that truly is the key. Uh -huh. okay. um, yes. And I'd just like to share a quick quote, quote that mm -hmm. really, I think, captures it from um, First Lady Michelle Obama in uh, her 2010 Oprah's Magazine and What I Know For Sure column. Mm -hmm. um, First Lady Obama said, authentic power. This happens when personality aligns itself with purpose mm -hmm. to serve the greater good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So true. So what's your second key to success? Um, being intuitive. Okay. Trusting okay. myself, my gut. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's your third key? Um, tr don't don't force the outcome. Yeah, don't ah. force. Oh, great. Wonderful. That's all great. So we've reached the end of the show. It, didn't that go quick? <laughs> really quick. And you had so, so much more to give us. <laughs> no, this is, this is perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Dr. Babby's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com, and landing page, danelia.org. Thanks to you, our viewers and listeners, for tuning in. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Nick Sexton, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And thank you so much, Dr. Bagby, for joining us today and sharing your insights to success. Think Tech Keys to Success will be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. So please tune in again and ask your friends and family to do so as well. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. And in closing, Danelia and I would like to share a quote from uh, Mikhail Kovatrov, believe me, and it says this, a successful leader implements projects that benefits others. Okay. Thank you all. And, and aloha, aloha. everyone.